All right, in this problem, we're just working through 7-2a. We've done FIFO, now we're gonna do LIFO. So again, we start with a beginning inventory, 20 units at $3 per unit. This is an inventory balance, 20 times three is of course 60. The date of this, I think was May, right? May 1st, yeah. So then on May 5th, we purchased five at $3.25. Five at three twenty-five. Five times three twenty-five is not sixteen. It is sixteen twenty-five. Let me just get a little formatting done here as well. So we had twenty at three dollars. We're adding five at three twenty-five to give us sixteen twenty-five. I'm just gonna get the. Uh, Decimals in the right spot here. And I'll have to do it again in the middle in a minute. Okay, there we are. So that's May 5th in the bag. Uh, let's move on to our first sale. And our first sale was on May the 13th. We sold 22 units. Again, I don't care what we sold them for. It's May the 13th. <laughs> Okay, good. We sold 22 units. Which 22 did we sell? Well, last in first out says we sold the most recent ones first. So five at 325, they went first. And we sold 22, so we must have sold 17 of these $3 units. Leaving us, well, if I sold 22, I had 25 in total. I sold f all five of the five, uh, uh, the 325 units. I sold 17 out of 20 of the $3 units. That must have left me three at $3. And three times three is nine. Okie doke. Let's move along to the next one. Ah, where is the problem? There it is. Um, okay, on May 20th, we purchased seven at 355. Oops. Let me just, uh, I forgot about the... Uh, decimals here. I need more decimals in this column. So we uh, sold or purchased seven at 355. Seven times 355 is 2485. We had three at three dollars for nine. We purchased seven at three fifty-five for twenty-four eighty-five, and that's it. That was May twentieth. On May twenty-fourth, five at three seventy. We purchase five at 370. Well, what do we have? We still have three for $3. We had seven at 355. And now we've purchased five at 370. I forgot the total. Five times 370 is 1850. Okay, let me get the underline underneath this. And then I'll say last, but certainly not least, May the 31st, and May the 31st, we're gonna make a sale. How many do we sell? We sell 13 units. Again, I don't care at what price. So I gotta say, which 13 did I sell? Well, I sold the 13 most recently purchased. So I sold five at 370. We're doing LIFO, remember? I sold seven at 355, and I must have sold one at three bucks. So five at 370 is 1850. Seven at 355 is 2485 and one at three bucks is three bucks. I have two left over at three bucks for six dollars total. Okay, we'll put a big underline underneath this one and we'll get to computing co uh, gross profit. So our sales rev minus our cost of goods sold equals our gross profit. So for our company, 
the sales rev doesn't change from one method to the next, just the number of units we sold uh, times the price, so 279.65. Our cost of goods sold, sum them up here, 113.60, sales minus COGS is gross profit, and our gross profit is 166.05. Okay, now we gotta record the journal entries for the purchase on May 24th and for the sale on May 31st. The purchase is really easy, right? debit inventory, credit cash, or credit AP. It's in fact the exact same journal entry. I could just copy paste this. Let's see what happens when I copy. Uh, you know what, it's not gonna work well. Uh, maybe if I, no, it's funny what happens. Can I copy this whole thing, I wonder? Well, look at that, it did copy and paste. So the May 24th entry is a complete copy paste, right? We bought 1850 worth of inventory. So debit inventory, credit AP, 1850. Uh, the second part, May 31st, debit, cash, credit, sales, exactly the same because we sold how many units? We sold 13 units and we sold them for, uh, let's, let's see, we sold them for $7.99 each. So 13 times $7.99 is still $103.87. Doesn't make a difference which inventory method you're using, it's still $103.87. So debit, cash, credit, sales for the amount of the sale on May 31st. The only difference is the COGS and the inventory. If I sum up these three numbers, if I add them all together, I get $46.35, not $45.70. So $46.35. So let's see if I can do this. Well, not as I thought I could. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this in a real sloppy way. I'm going to do it in different color ink. I'm going to scratch that out. I'm just going to say, okay, well... I forgot the number now, that doesn't help. I was about to curse. I don't really curse very often in my real life either. Um, certainly try not to curse at all on these videos. 46.35, that's the amount. Okay, so rather than 45.70, pick a pen. My cost of goods sold is 46.35 under LIFO. And not surprising, I have higher cost of goods sold. Why is that? Because my cost of inventory is rising at this time. Okay, that's it for LIFO. In the next video, we'll do the exact same thing, but we'll do it for the weighted average method. Here we go.